Thank you very much. Very nice to be here. Um, our innovation is based on a simple idea that the same way that you teach children reading and writing, the same way they should practice digital consumption and digital production. And uh, since we believe that the web is going to be increasingly visual, and um, we believe that then that's why creating interactive images is actually one of the best ways to practice digital storytelling. And this means that when you, and what's, what's interactive image means like whenever you're moving in a visual environment, you think images as a, like a learning platform. If you see something, you should be able to touch it and read more and learn that way, right? I mean, and, and what I mean by touching and seeing more, that can be a video, that can be a piece of audio, that can be text, that can actually be anything from the web. So this is very cool. You have the interactive experience. You can learn through images. That's cool. That's not the main point, though. The main point is that in order to create an interesting image story, that requires planning. And planning requires research. And kids are very excited about creating these awesome interactive images. So this research and planning comes almost automatically as a side product in the, in the middle of the enthusiasm. Let me show you a couple of examples. This is from preschool. Um, and, and by the way, in interactive images can mean regular images, can mean videos, can, can mean 360 images. So this is a actually preschool teachers in Eastern Finland. They used our technology to document a forest experience with two-year-old children. They took some videos of the ants that they saw. One, child, one child found a snail, so they took a picture of the snail. And of course here it is the teachers are, that are putting these stories together, but then they're using them to go back to the forest memory with the children in the group around them, let the kids touch the little buttons and, and remember what animals they saw. So it works like a memorizing an experience and a collective experience. Uh, 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 trip together. And of course, it's also nice to share it with parents. Here is another example from an elementary school, and this is second graders. Uh, in second grade, what, what uh, children can start practicing is finding and understanding different kinds of resources. So, for example, in this case, they have drawn, one, some, one of the children has drawn a really beautiful map of their own neighborhood. And then the class was engaged in finding different kind of resources. In this case, actually, they've already taken videos of their field trips, and there are some photo stories that they've taken. And then with the teacher, they collected them and put them on a map. So th that's, why they, that's how they kind of documented um, a, a nice story of where they live. This is uh, sixth graders from uh, a city Savon, called Savonlinna. Six, sixth graders created an, a cultural tour of their environment that they sent to their friendship school in the US. So at this point, children already typically are almost better uh, uh, technology users as the teachers. So you can give them actually responsibility as long as they present a good plan, what are they going to document? And this also offers possibilities for students who maybe have different learning style, so they can choose what, what they want to actually, in what format they want to demonstrate their learning. Are they more photography oriented, or do they like to think about sound and the audio environment? Or maybe they are writers and they want to do uh, writing, or maybe they like doing videos whatever they like, they can also change roles, but this offers a good opportunity to practice different formats for expressing yourself. This does have audio, but not in this presentation, so you can hear the children reading narratives. They read, here we are in Savonlinna, and we're looking at the Olavinlinna castle. So it's really cute because they get their own voice in these stories, and, um, and that, of course, increases engagement, both cognitive, emotional engagement to the subject of the study. On the college high school level, 
you can use this tool uh, already in different kind of development, almost like interventionist projects, whenever you need to document a situation. And I should mention actually that in vocational training, what's very popular is um, that students can take images of a certain situation, for example, service situation in restaurant, and they can use this to identify maybe, you know, what is happening, what should be happening. So it's kind of used the same way as a, you know, memorizing and, and documenting an experience and then improving it. So when you go from preschool to higher levels of education, uh, of course, the role of the teacher becomes more a facilitator and the role of the, the student becomes more independent content creator. We have altogether two and a half million uh, teachers and students using ThingLink globally today. Um, actually, interestingly, US and India are the biggest countries, equally much from US and India today. And then also France, Italy, um, UK after that. So the initial feedback has been very positive and, um, and teachers have particularly been interested in the 360 images because it does offer a new kind of participatory experience. Uh, so this is, a, this is just a new image format. This is not science fiction VR that's going to be, although I, I could agree that the science fiction VR, maybe it's been hyped a little bit too much, but this is an image format. And it's important to remember that's not going to go away. Viewing of these images will develop. And you can view these images on desktop, on tablets, maybe if you have mobile VR headsets, that's fine, but that's not required. But in the future, the immersiveness of, uh, uh, w will increase and improve. That was actually all from me. If anybody of you, your school, would like to try it out, please send me an email. I'll send you, in return, a free premium account for a year. You can test it as much as you like. Give me feedback. Maybe send me a note if you have tried it in a project. If you're, for example, documenting a field trip or anything, I would love to hear from you. Otherwise, thank you very much.